Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. We come to magnify you, God. And we come to lift you up.
morning, Mountain Church family. Our scripture today will be coming out of the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 through 12. And it reads, So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mahanim. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I might find favor in your sight. Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and divided the people that they were with him and the flocks and herds and camels in the two companies. And he said, If Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O oh God, my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord whom said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy the least of all the mercies and, and all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I have crossed over this Jordan with my staff and now I have became two companies. Deliver me I pray from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. For you say I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. That the Lord have the blessing of the reading and of the doing of his holy word. Morning, Mountain Church. Let's bow our hands for a word of prayer. Most gracious and most merciful Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Oh, we come in prayer this morning with a bowed down head in your humble way. Lord, first to acknowledge you for who you are, the great I am. Lord, we come confessing our sins and our transgressions. For Lord, we come asking for forgiveness this morning. Pray, Lord, that you will forgive us for the wrong we have done. Cleanse us, Lord, of every unrighteousness and create in us a clean heart. For Lord, we come this morning to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we come this morning to give you honor and we come to give you glory. For Lord, let's do your name. For Lord, we come this morning to receive a word this morning. For we come asking, Lord, that you would touch, touch the man of God, our pastor, Dr. Samuel Jackson, give it the second. Pray, Lord, that you would anoint him with power from on high to preach your uncompromising gospel. Oh Lord, I pray that you will speak to the man of God as well as from him today. Lord, use him as your vessel for your word to go forth. For Lord, we come this morning praying for a word. Lord, we're praying for a word to lead us and to direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Oh Lord, we need you. We can't make it without you, Lord. 
I pray today, Lord, that you just have thy own way in this worship service. Lord, just adorn us this morning with your presence and power of the Holy Spirit in a mighty way. I'm praying this morning for the Mountain Church family, Lord. I'm praying that something will be said today, something will speak, Lord, to our spiritual needs. For Lord, we need a word to lead us and direct us in these times that we are facing. We're praying for a word to give us comfort and a word to give us understanding today. But Lord, I pray that you would just have thy own way in this worship service, Lord. Bless this worship service in a mighty way. Have thy own way. And I pray today, Lord, that something will be said, something will be said out there on Facebook Live. For somebody who don't know you, no part of their sin, they hear the word today and be convicted, asking, what must I do to be saved? Today would be a good day. Oh Lord, I'll come praying this morning for those who are sick and shuddering, Lord. I continue to pray for your healing touch. I come praying for those that are bereaved. Pray, Lord, that you will bring comfort, Lord, to them in their time of sorrow. For you said in your word, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. For God, I know you are the great comforter, and there's nothing too great or too small for you to help. For, Lord, you can do all things but fail. Oh, but, Lord, thank you again for this privilege. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Just have thy own way, Lord, and I'll be so careful to give you the honor and the glory which is due your name. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. Restoration and reconciliation and also on revival. We are certainly grateful for all of you who have came in, registered, and already speaking and everything. Sister Valerie, Sister Zena, Sister Jamel, we see you out there in the comments. Thank you all for showing that Mount Sinai love and fellowship. And in the same vein, I have a greeting, a thank you card for you. Just for you, Mountain Church, it says, I'm going to start each day with a grateful heart. Mountain Church, thank you for being Psalms 107 and 1. On behalf of Deacon Calvin Knott's family, we are overwhelmed with the condolences, with the comfort in knowing that we can count on each and every one of you to be with us during times like these. Thank you for all the cards. Thank you for all the calls. Thank you for all the delicious meals and all the gifts of love, the flowers, the prayers that you sent to our family during our time of need. And this is for, and this is from Sister Sandra K. Knott, Sister Ernestine and Brother Daryl Richards, the family of our beloved Deacon Calvin Knott. So thank you, Mountain Church. This is a handwritten card and there's another one for the family of Brother Austin Davis saying thank you. So thank you, Mountain Church, for how you have been so gracious and loving, even during the pandemic, how you still showed love to our amongst our membership who in their time of loss and grief. And we want to also thank you for uh, for all the ways that you still continue, like for the gift of Sister Ernest. I'm sorry, let me get it right. Sister Evelyn McCarty, we want to congratulate you for your new wheels and your new whip, the way you ride around new. We want to send also congratulations to Sister Debbie Jones for your home dedication as well. And we want to still celebrate the events that are happening in the life of our church. And I'm going to ask that you send that same love that you have sent to the Austin Davis family, would you send that same love to our own Dr. Arthur Ben Faust during his time of grieving? We're going to ask that you send that as well to Sister Rosalind Bendy, who had the service for her sister on yesterday. So would you please keep those two families lifted up in prayer? As I mentioned earlier, we are still in the time of revival as well this month. That means our citywide revival will be happening virtually this week. It's going to be April the 13th through the 15th, and it's and you can take place here at the Mountain Church, but you Mountain Church members, we're asking that you all please log in through Facebook Live, and you can observe the citywide revival every day through, uh, uh, I'm sorry, April 13th through the 15th, where our guest preacher will be the Dr. Marcus D. Cosby of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. 
and it's going to take place from April 13th through 15th, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m., and you can tune in via Facebook Live. Now, I'm not saying that you have to leave work, but if you can, you can tune in at work, but don't get fired. Please don't get fired. Keep your job. Yes, but try not to shout too loud. Okay, but you can tune in at 11 a.m. via Facebook Live. And these are our announcements on today, Mountain Church. Let's enjoy worship. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. We say, God, you are exalted, Lord. God, who sits on the throne, we magnify you and we worship you. Right where you are, if you lift your hands and speak well of God, Lord, we say we love you today. We worship you, God. You are awesome. You are great, Lord. You are majestic. You are holy. There's none like you, God. And we offer a sacrifice of praise and worship to you, Lord. God, we exalt your name. Hallelujah. He is exalted, the King is exalted, and I will praise Him, say, He is exalted, the King is exalted.
brothers and sisters, we certainly look forward to seeing you this Tuesday through Thursday for our citywide revival. But we're so thankful that you're here now. And we ask that you receive who it is my privilege to present the president of Houston Metropolitan Baptist Minister's Conference and the pastor of Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Samuel Jackson Gilbert, Mr. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Mold me, melt me, break me, and fill me now with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that my mind is alert, that my lips are anointed. Open my mouth that I may preach the mysteries of your gospel. Forgive me of every sin, cleanse me of every unrighteousness. And Lord, I ask that you would hide me right now behind the deepest, darkest, and most obscure portion of your cross. For these your people will hear absolutely none of me, but hear absolutely all of thee. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'd like to call your attention your attention to Genesis chapter 32. It's the first 12 verses. I'm going to read the first five verses to preserve time this morning. Jacob also went on his way and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahania. Jacob sent messages ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. He instructed them, this is what you are to say to my Lord Esau. Your servant Jacob says, I've been staying with Laban and have remained there till now. I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goat, male and female servants. Now I am sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor in your eyes. Amen. Amen. Keep your pages open to the 32nd chapter. As you know, I think uh, for the year is for us to align ourselves with God's realignment. And we said that we have to be the church in order for God to grow his church. And in order for God to grow his church, that we must follow the model of Jesus. Therefore, we've been teaching on what it means to have prayer and devotion, we, what it means to uh, be a church that uh, is loving, what it means to be a church that has compassion, uh, what it means to be a church. But today, we began our new series of teaching on how Jesus modeled himself for the people of God today. And our theme for this month is to be reconciled and to restore for restoration and reconciliation. So therefore, as we began this new series for the month of April of messages on restoration and reconciliation, this message today is entitled, Let's Be Reconciled. Let's be reconciled. Now, this is not necessarily a shouting message, but if you get a chance to shout, go ahead. But this is a message for the heart and mind of every Christian who understands what, why it is necessary to have reconciliation in the body of Christ for us to model Jesus and to grow together in the spirit and admonition 
of the Lord. In their book on reconciliation, Emmanuel Cantigal and Chris Rice share the true story of Billy Neil Moore, who would both find Jesus while in prison and ultimately find his victim's parents of their murdered son to be his greatest advocate. While Billy Neil Moore was in jail awaiting a trial in which he would be sentenced to death, a minister shared with him the good news that Jesus loved him and wanted to forgive his sins. Moore learned that no one is beyond redemption. From prison, he wrote to his victim's family and asked them for their forgiveness. Astoundingly, they immediately wrote back to say that they also were Christians and that they had forgiven him. Then the family decided to petition the Georgia Parole Board to commute Moore's death sentence. In 1991, Moore was paroled from prison, transformed by the grace of God and his victim's family members. This is what he said. He said, when I was released, they embraced me like a brother. He's been preaching the gospel of forgiveness and reconciliation to school children and church groups ever since. Have you ever been hurt by someone else? Have you ever been hurt and wanted to hurt them back? Get even. Seek revenge. Retaliate. And even, on some cases, have some murderous thoughts. <laughs> no one would have blamed the Stapleton family if they had such feelings and thoughts. Yet they chose the path of forgiveness and reconciliation. Our text this morning records another example of reconciliation. Esau, the Old Testament character, had vengeful hatred and even murderous feelings toward his brother. And many would justify him for acting on those feelings. Esau, the story of Jacob and Esau reads like a juicy novel. The brothers were born to Isaac, the son of Abraham. And when Isaac is near death, he desires to give to Esau, the older of the two brothers, his blessings. Now today we bless things all the time. And it means approval or acceptance in our day. You tell a daughter that you have my blessing in marriage means I approve of the man you're about to marry. But in biblical times, a blessing was to grant another a place of honor and of status. You heard it said of some people, everything he or she touches turn to gold. That's the kind of reward that comes to one who has received the blessings. And usually the blessing is given to the firstborn. In this case, that is Esau. Yet as the story unfolds at the scheming of his mother, Rebecca, Jacob, the younger son, tricks and deceives his father. Isaac, so that the blessing is given to Jacob instead of the firstborn Esau. Jacob, whose name means deceiver. 
Imagine the shock and horror that Esau felt when he learns of the deception. With his mother's help, Jacob steals his blessing. They took advantage of an old and blind Isaac. Because of this treacherous act, Esau for years wanted to kill his brother. But something now has happened to both Esau and Jacob. And the story shifts from retaliation to reconciliation. From murder to mercy. And I just believe that someone who's listening to me today, the time has come for you also to move from retaliation to reconciliation. And one reason you should be ready to make the change is simply because life is too short. Eternity is too long. And you don't have time, church, to be angry. You don't have time to be bitter. You don't have time to be envious and resentful. You, you, you don't have time right now. The, the, the day is too short. Because life is like a vapor. It's here one minute. And the next minute it is When I was a little child, before I went to bed, pray prayers like now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I should die before I wake, I pray, Lord, my soul to take. I don't know if the Lord gonna be willing to be taking a bitter soul. The Lord be willing to take what kind of soul? Will he be taken? Angry soul. Bitter soul. Dangerous soul. You better be careful how you go to sleep. <laughs> because you don't want to wake up in heaven and find out that the judgment against you because you are vengeful and bitter. Don't, don't want don't to wanna find yourself before the judgment of God with that kind of spirit. And so today, I say to all in the kingdom of God, let's be reconciled. Let's be reconciled. The text teaches us several things about reconciliation. First, it teaches us that reconciliation begins with God. The text says in verse 1, Jacob also went on his way and the angels of God met him. Jacob was going about his business, but God sent some angels. <laughs> What did the angel say to Jacob? I, I would love to eavesdrop on that conversation. Whatever was said motivated Jacob to make amends and to admit his wrong and to be reconciled with his brother Esau. I believe that God works in our lives, church, the same way. And when we seek to enter his presence, he reveals to us those relationships that are broken and prompts us to make them right. And if you've wronged somebody or somebody has wronged you, it can sometimes make it hard to rest at night. It makes it hard to even pray and talk to God. And could it be that the reason that we don't pray us because we know God will reveal those people who need to be reconciled. Could it be the reason 
that we're never silent before God is because we're fearful that we'll hear God reveal the people we need to set things right with. And let me just drop this off while I'm going through this message. Don't seek God unless you want to make things right with others. I said, don't seek God unless you want to make things right with us. These angels showed up for a reason. And that reason, I believe, was to inform Jacob that before things can be right with God, they have to be right with his brother. If you want reconciliation with God, you have to be reconciled to one another. And if you want peace with God, you need to be at peace with one another. People love to say, I love God, it's just people I can't stand. And I hate to tell you this, but that's not Bible. You can't live in harmony with your Heavenly Father until you are living in harmony with your human brothers and sisters. Broken ties with one another, not only several relationships with one another, it also severs relationship with God. Then, then Jesus said in Matthew 5, 23, 24, so if you're offering your gift on the altar and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother. Then come back. Notice carefully what Jesus is saying. He's talking about coming to worship. And if you're offering a gift of money, of praise, and you remember somebody has ill will or hard feelings against you, go to that person. Make it right. Make amends. Seek reconciliation. Could it be the reason that your worship is meaningless? Your work is ineffective? And that your prayers are unanswered? Is that you have not reconciled with your brothers and sisters? Once you've been reconciled with God, you have no problem reconciling with others. But reconciliation begins, begins with God. Oh, well, I can labor there, but I don't have time this morning. But just know this. And once you understand what it means to be reconciled with God, because it was the Lord who brought you, the Lord who kept you, the Lord who kept you in spite of all the wrong you've done. He has reconciled you. You don't understand reconciliation until you first understand what God has done for you, even in the midst of your unfaithfulness. You can't pass on what you have learned, but once you learn it, you must be able to pass it on. I gotta go. I gotta go. Listen. The next thing the text teaches us. That not only does our reconciliation come from God, but we must be intentional. Intentional. Verse 3 says, Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Listen, intentional. Jacob knew that he had done wrong. Now he knew he had to make it right. He had to take the first step. A lot of times, that's the hardest thing for people to do. Is take that first step. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you haven't done nothing wrong. Yeah. Huh? But there's schism in the relationship. You know what the problem is? It's a standoff. Yeah. Most of the time because no one wants to take hallelujah, the first step. 
Now that Jacob knew he was wrong and knew he had to make it right, he also had to take the first step. Taking the initiative is imperative. I said imperative in reconciliation. Restoring a crack relationship is like mending a broken arm. Hmm? If your arm is broken, you take the initiative to get to the doctor. Huh? So the doctor can what? Set it right. Put a cast on it. And the healing can take place. Broken relationships are uh, like broken arms are never mended accidentally. They are mended intentionally. Huh? And so they require pur purposeful intentional action. Now, we may try to deny the pain or ignore the split. We may think that time heals all wounds, but it only moves the pain below the surface and is there where it would affect our future relationships. The problem with most relationships is that most people have not dealt with the pain from old relationships before they began new ones. And it's the pain of the old relationship that caused problems in Hollywood. New relationships. The relationship is easier to mend when the offender apologizes to the offender. But what if the offender does not admit they're wrong? What if they never say, I'm sorry? What if they never say, please forgive me? What then? The scripture informs us that even the offended is to take the initiative in seeking reconciliation. So again, to quote Jesus, if your brother sins against you in Matthew 18, 15, he says, go and Rebuke him in private, and if he listens to you, then you have won a brother. Look at the phrase, just between the two of you. <laughs> Y'all put quotes around, just between the two of you. I'm going to say it again. Just us are Bible believing but not Bible practicing. Just between the two of you. This is the most overlooked and most avoided verse in the Bible. Too many too often resort to our junior high days When someone has hurt or offended us, we go to everyone else and plead our case, our story, our sorrow to validate our feelings, to justify our anger, and we don't go to the person who has offended us. Needs to stop. Stop going to everybody but the person that you're talking to. Because let me tell you what happens when you go to everybody. When you go to everybody, you go to everybody, and they start taking sides with you. That makes it harder for you to get it right. Because, because now you gotta live up to all that you said about this person. Now you are in bondage. And by those who you talk to, trying to 
keep your image and it makes it impossible to settle the issue. Even when God has told you to fix that thing. You can't fix it because you can't go against what you said to your girlfriend about the person. Because <laughs> now they're going to feel like you did them wrong because now if you'd have told them how bad this person is, you'd have gone and fixed it. Now they feel like you ain't right. So shut up. Stop telling everybody. The Bible said, let me go on to everybody about this business. Keep it between the two of you and you. To fix it. Don't make a bad thing an impossible thing. Yeah. Yeah. To rectify. Ah, yeah. uh, go to that person. Yeah. What do you say? Well, look at it like this. Mathematics teaches us that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Don't you know that the same principle is true in reconciling relationships? The shortest distance between two people is a straight line. Just say I was wrong. Just say I really haven't been honest with you. Just say that your actions hurt me. When you did this, I felt this way. Just say, I love you too much to allow our relationship to crumble. I just simply say, the young people say, my bad. <laughs> Intentional. Don't, don't try to justify or rationalize your actions. Just admit it was a mistake. There's three words I want y'all to hold on to that's going to help your reconciliation. I'm going to give them to you this morning, hoping to help somebody in their relationship. Three words. Clarify, not confront. Clarify. When you go to a person for reconciliation. Clarify, not confront. We come to these encounters as an accusatory mode or a revengeful mode. Don't approach people in accusation. Let me say it again. It makes people defensive. Not always, but often the issue at hand. Most of the time, it's just a misunderstanding. Someone said something that wasn't that, that, that wasn't taken properly. Someone said something that was taken out of context. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and uh, uh, stated something incorrectly. So seek first to understand by clarifying. Clarify. Question. Could it be that some of our relationships are lived in grinding silence because we are unwilling to take the initiative and begin in the process, begin in the process of reconciliation? This is not always easy, especially if you've been the one that's been hurt or offended. That's why you must bathe. Reconciliation in prayer. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you must bathe it in prayer. You clarify, you don't confront, and you also, before you confront, bathe it in prayer. Huh? Uh, 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 even even Jacob in verse 9, you see Jacob is praying. He's praying, maybe for the wrong reasons, 
But he's praying because he's afraid, but nevertheless, nevertheless he's praying. <laughs> Even though sometimes your prayer is a little twisted. If you're praying, the Holy Spirit can fix it. But you got to at least, I'm not going to pray. Bathe in prayer. The reconciliation process is not a cakewalk and it get messy sometimes. Hearts have been hardened, feelings have been hurt, emotions are on edge, wounds are gaping. The offended, when approached by the offender, may look for an ulterior motive and may feel that the offender is disingenuous. The offender may be thinking, why after all these years do you want to get you know, they're right now. Why do you want to make things right? And so God needs to soften hearts, to ease the emotions, to heal the wounds, to bring understanding to the reconciling party. No, no, no greater power is available for that to happen than prayer. Prayer changes up. Can, can, can I say something to you? Don't pray unless you want God to change. Yeah, don't, don't pray unless you want to let go of some unforgiveness or some bitterness or some grudges uh, because prayer will change your heart. Prayer will melt you out. You can't be bitter and pray at the same time. The question is, does your heart need to be softened so that healing in your broken relationships can occur? Take the initiative and start praying and ask God to guide and lead you and soften your heart. And I hate to say it, but I believe it with all my heart that the hardest in the world, the hardest hearts in the world, but not really the ungodly, but among godly people. It's really to get hard to get godly people. Folk who ought to know better. <laughs> to take the initiative in what? Reconciliation. Huh? And many relationships cannot be reconciled even in the body of Christ because people won't take the initiative to pray and ask God to soften their heart. Well, I'm closing now, but listen. Reconciliation begins with God. Reconciliation must be intentional. But finally, reconciliation includes forgiveness. Includes forgiveness. Jacob wanted to find favor in the eyes of Esau. He, he sought peace. He desired to put the past behind him. He almost Himself before Esau. He opened up his heart. But what he wanted most of all was forgiveness. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the Bible said that Jacob sent a messenger to tell his brother Esau, I've been standing Laban and with Laban and have Remain there till now. I have cattle and donkeys and sheep and goat, male and female servant. Now I'm sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor in your eyes. In other words, you can have all I have if you just forgive me for what I did. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, you know, all these things materially don't even matter to me. All I want is forgiveness. Oh, the Bible says when he saw his brother, he embraced him. And as they held each other, I'm sure that Jacob said, please forgive me, brother. Then Esau spoke these life-changing words says, I forgive you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, forgiveness is not optional in reconciling a broken relationship. Forgiveness involves 
Let him go. So you can get on with the rest of your life. You know, it, it's not probation. It's a part of it. Forgiveness means that we, 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 we don't require any money. We don't require no words. No actions as payment. It means that you are free. It means you are liberated. Forgiveness is a long healing, not a monetary one, momentary one. Listen, don't you think it's time to let go of your hurts? Don't you think it's time to let go of some stuff? Don't you think it's time to tell someone I forgive you? Oh, I want to remind you all through the Bible. Reconciliation is going on. Joseph was reconciled back with his brothers after they sold him in the slavery. Paul was reconciled back uh, to John Mark after he deserted him on a missionary journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goma was reconciled back to Hosea after she left them pursuing after other lovers. The prodigal son was reconciled back to his father after he came to his senses. But the greatest reconciliation story that was ever given was when God reconciled through Jesus Christ, man back to God. Hallelujah. I said, Romans 5 and 10 comes to my mind that when we were enemies, when we were enemies of God, that we were reconciled back to God through the death of his son. For yet while we were yet sinners, it was Christ who died for us. I'm so glad that I received my reconciliation to God through Jesus Christ. How did it happen? Well, let me tell you an old story. It was out on the hill called Calvary where Jesus died for your sins and mine. The Bible said they pierced him in the side. The Bible said they nailed his hands to the cross. Have I got a witness? The Bible said that the blood came streaming down. And because of that blood, I hear somebody saying, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm saved today because of his blood. 
You can mail your tithes, you can mail your love offering, you can mail your Sunday school money, your benevolent, to the church at 902 West A Street, Houston, Texas, 77007. And you can even bless the man of God with his cash app, dollar sign, D-R-S-A-M, and the number two. We encourage you to be a blessing to God, his church, and the man of God. Thank you so much for being in tune with this particular opportunity to hear from the Lord. Once again, we present to you our pastor, Dr. S.J. Gilbert, the Center. Amen. Thank you, Mountain Church, for tuning in today. Our worship Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. I want you to know, Mountain Church, I love you. I'm so proud to be your pastor. And let me just remind you that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m., tune in to Houston Met Facebook page. Houston Met Facebook page. Turn, tune in and you'll be able to see and hear our citywide revival. But more than anything else, we need your support, your prayers and support. So keep us lifted this week as we try to revive our city spiritually through our citywide revival. Our Father God in heaven, I just thank you now for word and worship. Thank you for teaching us what it means to be reconciled to our fellow brothers and sisters and all that we may have a right relationship with you, and that we may be closer to you. 
Lord, we pray now that you bless each now by the sound of my voice. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us. Until that day, we shall meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's sing. It is. 